Good morning, YouTube, and happy Saturday. I'm Robin McClendon, back in my studio, here working through my new book, Gel Plate Printing for Mixed Media Art. We're actually coming up on a year that she's been released. So, and as you know, those of you have been following along, we've been going through this book all year long, and we are now on chapter 17. We're almost done. We're on chapter 17, and we've been doing our companion art book um, with the techniques that you're you know, putting your own book together. So you'll everybody will have their own gel plate printing for mixed media art book with their own personal art in it, doing all these techniques. So that's good. That's a lot of fun. Um, so we're going to do block printing inks, and this chapter is block printing and intaglio inks on the gel plate. Now, um, put this down. So chapter 17. So. The difference is that we're going to be using block printing inks. Both inks are water soluble. They're very easy to use, very easy to clean up. It just literally takes soap and water to clean this stuff up. It's even easier than acrylic, believe it or not. It's so easy to use this. But um, um, And they dry very quickly. They're oil based, but they're water soluble oil. So um, they they dry very quickly as soon as they hit paper they start drying on the gel plate you could leave it on there and come back a, a day later and it still would be um, moist but on paper they dry right away where I would suggest starting off with the block printing and not the intaglio because the intaglio is a soy based and it's 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 a little um, harder to work with. I hate to use that word, but once you kind of work with the block printing and you get it down, you can work with the intaglios. I like them on the larger plates and you want to make sure you're using good either rice paper, well it's called rice paper, but really um, an Asian paper that's either um, Gompi or Mitsumatsu or one of those where it's really absorbent um, or you want to use a good printmaking paper because there's, the soy is so um, liquid it needs to have a good strong paper to absorb it um, but I love it the, the effects are, are beautiful as well so but we're gonna use the block printing inks the speedball is really good here um, so let's get started so I'm just gonna have my eight by um, let me just kind of get this paper a little here um, my 8x10 plate. I'm using some um, tracing paper. You can use um, menu tissue. You can use deli paper, but don't use anything that's real waxy. But anything that's going to be pretty absorbent, you can use that. Any papers, you can even just use copier paper. I've already started printing, like I said, so I have this bag, this white paper bag that I'm working on, and I've just been doing a lot of my off printing on it to get the layers built up. Um, and I'll show that technique, but what you want to do is that I just kind of, when I go to clean my plate, I'll clean it on here. And then I, so I get a lot of color and texture behind here. And then, um, I'll print on top of it and bring more definitive imagery to the top. And so you kind of want to have, I always say, have two pieces of paper working at the same time. So. I already have stuff on here. This is mostly, there was some old Golden's paint on here that I left on here because it's starting to pull now. I've been working about an hour um, uh, with my patrons doing a lot of printing and I've got the plate to a good point that it's responsive. But um, so some of that is starting to pull some of the, the old paint off, but it's very, that, that golden blue is very, very thin. So don't try to do like with thick paints because if the paint is really thick and encrusted on your plate, it's just going to act as a resist. So you just probably do best to clean it or do a print that will clean your plate completely so that all the acrylic is gone. But there is just a little light layer of acrylic there that's starting to pull. So let's start with, I like to start with sort of a medium tone. So this is a silver. Let's go ahead and get this. You know, I, I'll kind of start with something that's a little lighter um, and sort of build up to a black, um, to a darker color, like the black, and then, you know, come back. So just kind of use your plate. 
I'm just using my plate as a palette, but you can um, you can also off print. And uh, it's getting a little sticky here. It does that sometimes. But I'm not, I don't always try to go for like a full print. So this is deciding it wants to pull off. So what we're gonna do, it's a good time to use my paper bag grab some of this color um, and we'll just try to pull and let that sit on there for a little while so it can really absorb the color and let it pull it off you'll find that it does that sometime certain colors will do it sometimes the temperature or the amount of moisture in the plate but I just work through it because I'm not really trying to get like these are the ones I just did to show you where we're going. So you see where I mean, I just it's all these really thin layers and they're not all complete. I, I like to use pieces of the plate. Um, you see you get a lot of texture. It sort of almost looks like a litho plate or something with the kind of texture you can build up on this. So. What I say is just print without expectation. Like there, it wasn't, it was deciding it didn't want to spread out on the plate for some reason that silver is not happy right now. So I'm just going to pick it up and it'll just become part of a, you know, it's going to have a lot of texture. It's going to be really good. So you see what this looks like. I mean, look at that. Just a lot of texture. And that uneven pattern is uh, serving us. So we're just gonna go with it. So I have some more on here. Let's see, it doesn't. So let's, um, I'll roll it out on, on our paper. You know me, when I'm presented with a challenge, I, I I allow that challenge to okay so that'll be a part of our foundation we'll just let that we'll let that marinate let me go and use a black actually that that was a blick one block printing ink this people I mean the blick are fine I've used them before but just certain colors sometimes want to be a little funny so. but just pull it don't not pull it because the kind of thing we're going after is I, I use these block prints and I love the texture that you get from them I love these really sort of uh, glossomer kind of prints that you get so I don't let it stop me so let's go ahead these are cut from um, Cut these from uh, file folders. So I had some file folders. And you just take it and, you know, <coughs> get some shapes. And sometimes I'll refresh it and get, you know, new shapes. Um. Yeah, and then even the little curvy shapes I like to keep because um, those angles can do some fun things. Okay, so you know what I'm using because then I also will use these pieces back down in collage. So I'm going to go ahead now and take and lay this down on that sheet that I just rolled the silver out on. So that will just be a foundation for our print. So if you if you find that you're not getting that really nice, smooth, even printout that happens with acrylic, just know it's, it's just a different animal. And you might find some colors, depending on the formulation, sometimes they'll roll out really nice on the plate. Sometimes they'll kind of get sticky like a... Uh, and kind of start waxing off versus waxing on, print it, just print it. 
just print it. You're, you're going to get some amazing effects. This is a different medium, so you're just going to have to kind of get used to it. But trust the process, and uh, you'll start getting some good stuff. Okay, so that's good. See this on top of that silver that rolled out? So I still have some really good texture there. See that texture laying there? Um, some of that silver that was on there is still there. So, yeah, we're just going to keep working. Okay, so I'll take these off. Now, it's a little bit still on there. That'll print. So let's just take that on here and put it like maybe right in this area. It's going to be um, very... Um, it'll be a faint print, but all of this really builds up with this technique. Because the layers are always going to be a bit thin anyway. So, as much material as you can get, you want to. Yeah, see, this is good. So, see, we got that print. See this right here? Uh, can you guys see that? Yeah. So, that printed right over top of that gold that I already had down there. So let's let's get some of the copper. And what we're doing is we're just going to keep on building up. Now that I have that um, the black that I just put on the sheet we were using, we can come back with a, a lighter color on top, and so that'll also push it back too. So. So this is called copper, even though it does look gold, but anyway. So see some of the, this one is, is just rolling out beautifully smooth. You just never know with some of the colors I find. Um, so what I want to do is just get a stone pattern over top of that. So. That there, that down some. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to pick this one up. And I like to also pick things up in sections. So let's just get some of this. So you also don't have to pull the full print like in the order that you created it. I like to mix it up. So like I'll put this down and get some of this down here. And then I'll, I'll place it differently once I look at this and then figure out where else I want to put it. Okay, so see we get got that gold down there, which is nice. So let's, let's go ahead and pick up let's just go over this. And you kind of, it starts getting a little sticky. So you don't have to wait for it to dry. When you get enough layers that you feel like you could start losing some of your material by transferring back on the plate, then that's when I sort of let, I stop and let, let it dry a little bit more. But I find if it's sticky, it also picks up 
it also picks up more of the material. See, so right there, we just kind of broke up that pattern some. Okay, so now I'm going to go for, I'll just go ahead and print this. It's probably, it's, it's, it's very faint, but on my, my white paper bag over there, <laughs> I can put some of that right here. So let's just grab some of it. It's just gonna transfer a little gold. And, and visually looking through the camera right now, it may not look like much, but if you're, if you're looking at it, you know, um, with the naked eye as you're looking at it yourself as you're printing, you see a lot of it. I never know how much the camera is going to pick up. And it's funny, a lot of times I think the camera is not picking up much. And when I look back at it, it picked up a lot. So I always underestimate that. But see this right here? I mean, it picked up. See how we've kind of got that pattern it picked up? And it, and it starts knocking things back. So that I'm getting this overall texture going on. That when I go to print over this, this is going to really be be good and then the reason why I like working with the bag and also working with um, that tracing paper is then I can stain it afterwards like I'll coffee stain it or use one of the other stains and a lot of that white will then even get more of um, an antiqued sort of look to it and it really it really finishes off the prints nicely okay so what color do I want Let's do some of the brown. The brown can be a little sticky too, but we'll see. I think that sometimes the formulations are a little thick and I think that's where some of them act a little differently. Um, and sometimes you have to like, I'm applying a lot more pressure right now. Um, to really get it distributed and that'll help too okay so you can see the distribution is a little uh, but that's good because I want to take that and let's now put it right here uh, let me see maybe move it down so it's opposite this Because it's not a really full um, spread, you know, it was kind of like starting to come up in places. I'm going to use that to my advantage because it means I won't have an exact, I won't have a, um, a detectable brayer line. Um, and that'll just integrate over top of this nicely. So it's kind of a different way of thinking about printing, but prints are just worth it. If you don't do anything but get a lot of texture on your paper to use it as collage papers and uh, or to do some mark making back over top of them, it's well worth it. Well worth it. These papers are just always so beautiful. You can use um, tea bag paper as well. Um, you can use any of your Asian rice papers like as well so they all work nicely oh this is good yes so see what happened here I love it so, so we got that image there we started knocking this one back that texture is there it's pulled some more of the the old wall stuff so love it Lay that down there let that dry That's good. Okay. So we have that little piece there, which I'm going to go ahead and put right back on here. Like right here. That brown will pull. And 
And of course, you can use um, things like grass, um, grasses, leaves, you know, all that stuff make good impressions um, to break up the space. So let's get some more black because I want to, well, I got this one little area here that I want to put some more color down right there before then I come back over all of this with some black. I'm really liking the, the subtle building up of those shapes. Repeated is really looking good. This is just a good base paper to then do some more collaging on. I think I'm going to go and get this pewter. Let's get some pewter down there. This one is really juicy. <laughs> so just kind of mix it around on the plate. The plate definitely likes the ones that are more oily than not. The ones I find that have less oil in them for whatever reason. I don't know if it's just the formulation, it's just kind of drying up over time, even though these are these are um, fresh paints. But I don't sweat it, I just go along with it. Let's put this down. That, that, and I flip these around back and forth because I'm always trying to preserve um, some of the different sides so I can decide which side I want to use for my collaging because like I said these become collage elements as well so um, okay now this section right here I want to fill up so I'm just going to go ahead and put this down just the whole thing and I'm putting it upside down so that that image will be like multi-directional and then we can come back and I'll show you how to kind of put some black over this to give it some definition and uh, for those of you who already have some inks, <laughs> I know you already start pulling them out, but grab them and um, I'll leave links for the, the speedball sets. You can get these right on um, Amazon, of course. They have one set that's the metallics. I think there's four or five in a box. They're not that expensive. These are not expensive paints. And then there is one that kind of has your yellows, reds, blues, and stuff in it. I'll put both kits down there because... Um, they're, they're good basic colors and you can mix these colors too so they do mix nicely oh this is good <coughs> see. so you see how we fill that up up in there that looks good okay so what we're gonna do is have a little bit of leftover on the plate so I'm just going to take that and put it somewhere else it doesn't ever hurt to add add to it so lay that down add to it and uh, then we'll do our black okay good so that got That got some more of that picked up nicely. Alrighty, so we'll finish with um, some black. Show you how I do it. And we'll finish up the paper bag print because the other one is done. This one I'm loving. I'm gonna leave it just as it is. I think we've got a lot of good interest and variation going on there. 
I've learned you figure out how much to work them and, and when to stop. But, but if you decide that you want to put more back on them, you know, when they dry, you can still come back and print over them. So I use my, you know, my 80% rule. I stop when I really like them. When I feel like in my spirit that they're done, I stop. Um, but I may come back at another point when I'm working and I look at the print and I want to add an element, then I do. So let's put that there. <clears throat> let's get... that there just kind of put things different places I try to a lot of times work things off the corners a little bit so that when I get a print um, it may be it's broken up but I don't have the square edges because I'm going to be working in the center a little bit and because of that I want to I like to work things around the edges to get uh, I thought I had some more of those little pieces where's my little pieces? Just kind of allows you to sort of break up the really harsh edges. I kind of want to work this sort of right in this area there. So I'll put this down right about there and then see what we pick up. It's going to be a strong print but we have enough background now that it can take that print. Make sure you get all in the little areas, get around your your mask really good so that, um, you know, you get a good crisp shape. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. Great. So you see, we've got a nice strong print there, but it's broken up enough that it doesn't look like a square right in the middle of it. And we have so much other stuff going on around it that um, this is looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... We'll still have some here. And this print right here should be pretty strong still as a as an outline. So I want to go ahead and take that and offset it like maybe right in this area here. Okay? And we'll pick it up. And that'll give us a nice bold. I mean it's not gonna be bold, but it'll be a dark um, second print over this area where a lot of the silver is and it should counterbalance um, what we just put down nicely. Oh yeah, this is good. Yep, perfect. So see that? Uh, can you see it? It's so much going on but when you look onto it you see it better than the way the light is hitting it because it's really a good print there it's starting to see a little bit right there but yeah oh just seeing the complexity I know this sort of looks just like a blur because of the lighting is kind of I don't know if I can get the lighting so that you can appreciate it it's sort of harder to see it with the glare but if you're looking at this like I am it's just gorgeous so when you start working it you are going to love this. Um, 
so yeah, we'll stop there. I think that's giving you a good idea. This is the one that we worked on also. Love it. That one's ready to work into some collaging. And I'll show you, these are dry, and these are the ones that I worked earlier with my patrons. And you can see they all are just a little bit different using a lot of the same stencils, but then I could actually begin to connect these in a, um, a larger print. You see, a lot of times I'll print them and then I'll start putting them together. This one is a completely different coloration, but um, I really love this. But you can see that image is right in there. And uh, so you can also link them together and sort of get this real cave wall kind of thing. Oh, I just love these. Oh, yummy. Oh, gosh. All righty. Well, this has been a wonderful, you know, morning t spent with you guys as always. You know, we love this. I love, well, I know we've been chatting it up in Premiere and, um, I love being on this journey with you all. So pull out some file folders, nothing fancy, just some of your, copy your paper works beautifully. These inks are like, I think you get four or five, four I think in a box for maybe $15, $16, something like that. They're not bad, or you can go to Blick, you can go to your local, um, you know, craft store, because mostly everybody has a speed ball. In different countries, I know it'll be different things, but it's it's block printing ink. You're just looking for block printing ink, and that's what you want to look for, and um, I don't know if that's showing up well enough. Here, bl block printing ink. You just want to get some of this, and just have at it. It's a different experience. Like I said, if it's sticking to the plate, don't worry about it. Print it. You saw how I just printed through that silver, and it's ultimately right here, and look at all this good texture. I just printed it. It dries, just like anything else. And um, I really like the texture that it's left. It's really good. So print it anyway. <laughs> no mistakes. <laughs> All right, guys. Love you so much. Have a great week. Um, enjoy yourself in your studios. And until next week, happy creating. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Also, make sure to thumb the chat and thumb this video up if you enjoyed it. And hit all if you're new to my channel so that you'll get the notifications every time I come live every Saturday, 7 a.m. Pacific time. And yeah, love you guys. Bye-bye.